Should be some cricket stomping fun every week, but you know what? It hasn't been. Why is that? What's going on? What's happening? And I sigh. I think more and more about what's going on, and it's giving me less and less direction. I want to be helpful, but i got to realize that some people are picking up what I'm saying. They're not, not just because you think you have to do because I'm, I'm suggesting it. You, you, there's got to be something in us that looks around that's activated before we even get there. When I say I'm choosing something, that, some wrong that needs to be made right, I'm, I'm saying there should be already something in you that you know is wrong and it needs to be fixed. And so we should be able to jump right in and do something. And it's really, again, uh, you'll learn, well, if you don't do it, like bad, like I say in the in the Twitter, the bad don't fix itself. If someone, no one's going to do anything with the problems that we see. They're going to fester and w- get worse, and the wounds are going to get bigger, and pretty soon they consume the body and just destroy the whole body. But apparently, for the most part, people don't seem to be aware of that. You know, as I said before, it's not even a judgment. I can see where, as a society, we've been, well, besides being duped, which I'm finding out interestingly, this last week's been kind of interesting postings that have been going through, people are coming along with what I've been saying for quite a long time. They're coming on to the point of their dupidness. I've talked about over and over again. Coming on to the point that they don't, they quite, they now start to see how this thing is starting to uh, be one big breads and circus, one big show for your consumption. And I've been trying to show you we got to even look past that. Don't get too lost in all that. Use it for the instruction it gives us. For the evidence it gives us to apply to the things that we need to get done. Because if we don't get them done, those that are getting things done will win. And those that seem to have a rule over the over the world, if you will, is going to be not good for most everybody else. And you're not providing any example anyway. So you're holding, it's like sitting on a rock and contemplating your navel. You're not, you're not, you're not doing anything for people to see what ought to be done. They don't have a clue. They're lost and they're clueless. They don't have a beginning question. Talked about cluelessness. It's probably the worst. That should have been one of the commandments in the Bible, I think. Thou shalt not be clueless. Because that's uh, you're absent of any ability to even understand what's happening around you. And so we got to try to give you anything. It doesn't matter. I tell you, at least all this stuff we hear is notice, is news, is all... It's all just a big setup, but it's a notice that we can use to say what's going on. And that there's another thing behind the scene. It's not just right behind the scene. This is deep and wide. This corruption, this deception is deep and wide, and it's caused us to be here today. It causes me to be here to talk to you. It causes you to possibly just sit here and listen. Uh, but I, we really have to get move, moving on and uh, fix this. If I didn't say it, this is BTWRLM314. For those of you that eventually want to get to links. And today, I think you're going to want to pick up some of these things. If you want to do and engage in any way, uh, we're going to have some links coming through. So I'll get on right to those. Uh, one of the first conundrums, I said, when it stops making sense, go look into where it stops making sense. You'll find a whole, it's fertile ground for whatever whatever you find in there. Whether or not you want to apply it is a total different thing. And, and so I look for things that are mostly applicable in the generic, because I can't talk to any of you specific. And when you contact me, Specifically, we can go through that pretty quickly. Uh, some people I find, though, they, they'll, they'll ask me questions, but they're really not, their heart's not in it. They just want to hear me talk or something. I, I don't know. They want to hear me write. They want to waste my time. I'll give them the answers, and then it doesn't, there's no reflection. And it's really disappointing. And so this is a lot of people like that. On the other hand, there's a few of you that really kind of roll up your sleeves and, and take what you can and do as you can. And I really appreciate that for yourself and for those of you that, around you that you're helping. And so, this is not going to be personal to us, but it's interesting on the, relative to the oppression that we feel, the military industrial complex, how they, how they, uh, make, make up, how they supposedly fund all this. Remember all this, all this funding, they say taxes theft. No, it's, it's your agreement to pay taxes that you, that, that you've been in a, in a construct that you've said that you've, you've allowed it. It's, it's an extortion, but it's really, uh, again, walking with the ring in your nose. But they want to look very carefully at the Constitution. It was an open-ended check. It was a full faith and credit of the people. Well, what's that? I mean, people don't notice these little things. But anyway, so on this monstrous, uh, gaping hole, stinking abyss of funding, 
they've been able to do the military industrial complex pretty good. It's not the only thing going, you know. So all this stuff. But again, what are we going to do with it? We're, but we can, not much, but we can take note and we can start not feeding into the hyperbola and hysteria about all this and not get too wrapped up in it. Notice it's just the big breads and circuses. And we don't do that just to say, I'll oh, see, we know or we understand. We use it to not look at it anymore. Just keep, you just kind of know it's out there. You just kind of keep an ear to it, but you turn toward the important work. In this case, we are getting an interesting, I just found this fascinating. It wasn't even much of a read to read for, but uh, the title caught me. And I don't know why I think this way, but it's, uh, again, just indicative of the big nonsense that goes on around all this. And, and again, this nonsense, people believe this nonsense, and I'm talking people in, in decision-making places, and this could be some serious stuff eventually. It may be that making uh, dumb mistakes, uh, dumb in, uh, taking information uh, and not understanding it, it makes you make a wrong decision, and these people are in the places that can do us and pretty bad, and you're seeing that in the government right now. It's, the, again, the caucusocracy. I really don't know. The worst has risen to the top, and we've allowed it. But anyway, right, they've uh, they've produced they've produced things, and the the caucusocracy will allow things to be produced. They will make tales and to, uh, to tell us all kinds of things. They'll tell us, uh, you know, that they're helping us out and making high technology, and and all along we don't even know uh, what's going on. We don't know the background. I mean, even Clint Richardson, looking through these corporations, Clint Richardson should have exposed a whole lot to people. I don't know why more people didn't get involved and don't get involved with. Tracking the, you know, follow the money. Well, why don't, why doesn't most people do? Start building your own dossier on the facts you're going to need. For what, folks? For when you find a wrong you need to make right. Where's that going to go? Well, maybe military industrial complex doesn't go anywhere, but you see and you, you can track down the path of where the money goes and how it goes. It's applicable across the board. So when you're dealing with a vaccine, your little one's going to get a vaccine and you got the state coming at you. You can go do the deep, deep pocket money side as one of your studies, and you have a dossier on how all this stuff is uh, wrong and corrupt from the beginning. But anyway, right, this is a interesting, to me it was interesting, and it's really a quick little answer in my mind. Now, I understand there's little systems here and there that would be worked out, but this was just fascinating uh, a bit about what we're being told. And maybe what, I mean, we're set, it's, again, I see this stuff as a setup for a takedown, and I'm, I just don't want us to buy into it, even though we, in our mind, don't. If we don't work against it, then we are, we're, we're being the accessory when we don't stop the crime around us or identify it or continue to call it out, however we would. Uh, but here's the word. Here's the story. Right here. Japan grounds F-35 fleet after jet disappears from radar over the Pacific. That title just triggered one thought in my mind. I thought that was supposed to be disappeared from radar. I thought they designed that thing to not be seen by radar, at least a little bit, right? I mean, this thing was not supposed to be found by radar. And so what's the real story? Yeah, I shouldn't even, you know, there's nothing more to talk about. The, the, the F-35 is supposed to be stealth technology, disappears from radar. Something that was supposed to be the size of a bird. They couldn't see it anyway, hardly. And they don't know where this thing went. I mean, I hadn't seen the last report. I said they still haven't found the plane, so uh, I won't, well, I won't say more. Uh, so it's an interesting problem if you've got an airplane you can't find and it disappears. Uh, what is that? Anyway. So we're making lots of money uh, talking about high-tech stuff, and people are putting their life on the line about this high-tech stuff. You can't be seen. I'm going to go attack you. And uh, Russia keeps saying, no, we can see that thing. And so our, those, of, uh, those people that are in the armed services that go in and try to fly these planes and think that they're doing something, they're walking themselves right into death, actually, the fodder. They make a lot of money gets made behind all this. And interestingly, uh, what we we're talking about here, Lock, Lockheed Martin. You start looking at the military industrial complex. You start looking behind the scenes on how the corporations are made. You start looking at the same method of destruction as I see in the Constitution. I've talked to you about it before. The reservations of power and authority. You're sitting in the construction of these nested corporations that Clint Richardson found in his study with the advancing what I, uh, Walter Burian's work on the so-called CAFR, the Comprehensive Fed Annual Financial Report which I was working with Walter Buring back in uh, 2002 or three or four and trying to get a video out through public access and uh, had a Bury at Walter Buring talk about all this, and we got, got a tape. That, that broadcast disappeared somewhere. But gl luckily, Clint Richard, Richardson picked up on that and did his thing. So you all can now get this information, how to track through the, follow the money, but you're going to find out the queen's behind a lot of this stuff. Now, I just find it fascinating these connections are sitting there. Now, do we do we wave that the UK flag over everything we do? Well, no, but you got to understand that's the condition of the battlefield, inside this battlefield. 
there's these res reservation powers that you really have to track back. And I didn't appreciate that until I got into property law. I got into the titles of the lands and how it was different in the United States of America than anywhere else in the world. And when I start to look at the titles and then relationships regarding those and who had the authority and power to do what they did, I started to understand these kinds of concepts of reservation of powers. In fact, res reservations are important in your patents. If you have one, you can't, you don't get what's reserved. Okay, that like, and you don't get something that's not supposed to be an implied uh, right assertion. But if you see a, a roadway over the top of a patent, that's a, that's an, an easement that uh, that the patented land is subject to. So you have all these hierarchies, and you have to follow those reservations. And so you find, I said, I've, I've told you over and over for for decades, and I wrote it about it a long time before that, that uh, reservations of authority are sitting in even the Constitution. Yeah, for those of you who got a question mark on your forehead and don't know what I'm talking about, go look at Article 6. Article 6 is a big black hole. And so here we have the same thing going on here. <laughs> a lot of money going into these uh, these uh, jets that uh, we thought were uh, stealthy, and they, they disappear on the radar saying that they were seen on radar. What are what are our, our people running into operating these things? What are they going to run into when the, when the, when we want to do anything relative to another nation? Which we shouldn't be doing anyway, but... This is the caucusocracy, remember. Like an alien attack, coming into the sky into space now, they're coming in at us, folks. Norwegians baffled by peculiar cloud activity overhead was another story. Neat stuff. I, I'm always into the science stuff. I'm also leery about what they call science. And, you know, we talk about a little bit about that. And, yes, the more I get, the older I get, the more ignorant I'm, I'm faving about how we even got here where we are. It seems like we're repeating a bunch of old stuff and people move from where we were starting to learn good stuff, actually substantial stuff, and made stuff up. Because that's the, we figured out how that, that was like their own derivative economy. Science became a made-up stuff, and then in 1985, the guru of made-up stuff says, that, yeah, all of our scientists now coming out, the best scientists, those scientists that we use, oh, those are the political lobbyists. And so I have a big, there's a big pall over science to begin with. It's always fascinating. I'll, I will ask so-called the scientists that of today. You can get them in Twitter now. It's kind of fascinating what Twitter can offer. And I'll ask my questions, and I don't think they're frivolous. But, you know, I don't get my answers. And so there's a big disconnect between what they used to talk about in science and what we were supposed to do in science, which I wanted to be a scientist. I, I trained a little differently. I didn't get there. I got, I got kind of laywayed along the way with all the policy to make people equal. Apparently, I was. I didn't realize how privileged I was, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter that I was top of the class in lots of things, that I was doing really well. It didn't matter uh, about all that. See, politics gets in the way, and then you start to see that politics drives your society, even under what you know. But so, like an alien attack, we've got to do the big sensationalism. Norwegians baffled by peculiar cloud activity overhead. Fascinating story. Nice video. I got a nice video. NASA did a test. It was actually testing the, uh, the energy in the, in the atmosphere. And the and the winds and the flu and the and the currents during an aurora, and it's very cool, very cool stuff. The sound, what it ends up being, this is alien attack, is really sounding rockets. So we can't even speak honestly about the thing and, and get people's attention by speaking honestly. There was just a sounding rocket going up to do a pretty fantastic test. Again, showing we don't know a dang thing about what's going on up there in our own sky. We're going to go to Mars, but no, we don't even know about what's going on in our own sky. But we're, we're doing science and we're doing tests. But what I found interesting in this story after I started reading about it, when you read the little story here, which is you got to get to the point of, well, again, it may be just one little sentence that actually brings up something that say, wait a minute, and you get to tie other things together. And I, again, offer this information not to say, oh, look what we can look at. I say start taking, again, all these notices are evidence. And when applied in the right way, making them relevant to something, that thing you want to make right, that you found wrong, you can start to make headway where you'd ha nobody has probably ever done before. Again, I offer the methodology of how you address all this nonsense you hear. And very few people want to hear that. They, want to, they don't understand what I'm actually talking about. They think they understand, but, but they don't. And you won't understand that until you actually get involved. And there's very subtle and peculiar ways to approach this, but it's very, very specific. And once you do, you start to see, well, you get to the point where you're like me. You write paper and no, no authority will respond. Literally will not. It's not like you find out, too, that the government isn't even respectful 
They won't even send you a letter, thanks for your letter, now go away. Or thanks for your letter, we'll get back to you. They don't even send you a letter of acknowledgement. Why? Because if, when you start doing the letters that you send right, you start capturing them up in their duties and obligations. They don't want to be caught in that. Because it's all a big game. It shouldn't be a game. Your life's on the line around this life and death game. But that's not what they want to admit to. Which means they know. They know what's going on and they know they're messing with people. Now, let's get back to the story about this alien's attack. And it's actually just sounding rockets. It's terrestrial rockets. Very cool looking stuff. Different, different colors in the sky. What they did, and they did spiral things and dropped out of the sky to do different tests at different altitudes. And uh, you could watch the video of NSA Vinigo that I have that they showed. Very cool, very neat, very colorful. And then you read the story. Two rockets were launched. Now, get this. This is down near the bottom of, this, of the report. If you just read the top few pages, you don't get this. Two rockets were launched from the Andoya Space Center in northern Norway. Uh, excuse me if I pronounced that wrong. They measured the temperature and atmospheric density and deployed tracers, including trimethyl aluminum and barium and strontium mixture, which ionizes when exposed to sunlight. Those of you on your persistent contrail track, did you find here something real familiar? Wasn't that the aluminum, strontium, and barium mixture? And here in this report, they tell you what they use it for. It ionizes when exposed to sunlight. You persistent contrail people, wake up. Start connecting the dots here. Am I proving out something? No, not really. But I'm saying we're looking at the same material that's tested. It's tested on this landing on the ground. It's contested when it tests the air. It's the same material that they've been spraying in the air. Or they deny their spring. And then I said, okay, let's go here. Remember, I did years and years ago that human, humic acid test about aluminum oxide materials and how fast humic acid, which is in the soil, created by bacteria in the soil by its natural process, how fast it would eat up uh, aluminum oxide materials to make them disappear. In other words, how long would it take for the evidence to be eaten by nature? Remember that they found that it would take three days. So if you're measuring it in the soil, it's been there for only three days. and That's pretty quick and, and telling. But the, the trimethyl aluminum is a compound they just admitted they put in this thing. And let's just read the very first part. They say that it ionizes. This is an interaction with the atmosphere, folks. So remember we talked about when I looked at the study when I did the humic acid report, and then I did the study about aluminum metal oxides. Uh, we, we found out that that, that material, uh, that that depending on how they construct that can do a whole lot of things to change the physical response in the atmosphere it can do all kinds of things it can change temperature convert frequencies it can reflect reflect absorb hold charge become a dielectric can become a deck de a de a conductor and dielectrics work in a different principle but they work as conductors in the proper fielding particularly in plasma the dielectric starts to work more like a conductor, but a conductor works more like a resistance. And so there's a, so looking here, let's go to the Wikipedia, it's simple. So they already tell you that this stuff, this combination ionizes. But when you look at the picture and the colors, well, the, these are the three colors that are coming down. And they do it at different al atmosphere, altitude. So look at those of you that are into this, start looking at this as evidence. And start to tie together. Don't make any, you know, you're not, I'm not saying this to make you, you don't make your, thesis out of it. These are bits and pieces, dots to connect at some point in the future once you've got it pulled together. And I think this is a small a, a trail. Maybe persistent if you want to do that. Uh, and hopefully not a con. You're going to show yourself how this works. Uh, you're going to do it through the reports that they give you. Trima trimethyl aluminum is one of the simplest examples of an organoaluminum compound. Despite its name, it has a formula, A2 Al2 CH3. I want to point something out in that C. That C is carbon. So think about this: that in the atmosphere, they're worried. Of, the governments are worried about carbon loading, about carbon in the atmosphere, and so they're putting these carbon molecules that are in an ionizing for a field uh, into the atmosphere to try and stop carbon 
pollu pollution now they call it. And so you see the lunacy start right there just in the formula. Moving on, uh, it exists as a dimer. This a colorless liquid, this colorless liquid is an industrially important compound but must be handled with care due to its pyroporicity. It evolves white smoke, aluminum oxides, when the vapor is released into the air. Now let's go put that in application. I jettison this out of a rocket, rocket uh, tube and it turns into white smoke. What if I was to put it in the atmosphere from a jet engine? It turns to white smoke. When it would disperse as it goes out and spreads out and stays that way. When the uh, sun finally hits it, it starts to ionize, doesn't it? So, here's some dots to put together. Just in this one story about uh, they want to make it, oh, look at the aliens. So you go looking for the alien. There's no alien. It's just us using the same stuff that we're told that they by the inventions and what they've admitted to now and the things that they said, oh, now we're going to get the colleges to do this. Well, we better do a check on We're going to use chemtrails now to, to do the test. We, we predicted all this behind the woodshed was coming. And here it is. But now we start to see that they're using the same mixture as a sensor to do things in the atmosphere. Just as I told you was going on in the metal oxide, oxide study I was doing for you when I did the humic acid report. These things are in the atmosphere. These, this little test may have only been doing this, what they said about a temperature and atmospheric d density and tracers to follow with uh, what the, the currents did during the aurora, but it's also putting things into the atmosphere which become interactive with it. These are highly interactive, not highly inert. And so, moving on, if those of you that are interested, uh, right in that little story, was I, I was just fascinated a bit more that they here, if you look, wait long enough, you'll, they'll tell you what's going on. The problem, I'm trying to get you ahead of time so you see it, and we can do something about it. Now, what do you say? What am I going to do about it? Well, there is this provision under Title 50. They have to give you notice. And so maybe you go through there. I don't know for you what, what's going to be the answer. I just know what I'm looking for and what is supposed to happen if we stand up and assert what's supposed to happen while they are, the criminals are trying to uh, get away with the crime. And if there's going to be a notice and you now start saying, hey, wait a minute, now I see what you're doing with this, and then we, by extension we do this other thing with this chemical, you haven't told us, uh, you haven't done the test to show that this is not, not pesticides to people. And what about all that carbon you're putting in the atmosphere that you, you got, yet you're complaining about everywhere else, that you're going to say, I'm punitively damaging the environment when I create carbon, and you're spraying it in the atmosphere, in this compound, and other compounds. So I'm, after, I'm asking you to think, open your mind on how you, I, I don't like to call it a debate, because I, I said don't make a debate. You go in there with the issue and the facts, and there's no debate. But I, I call it a debate to the point to say, open your mind to how to make the debate happen in your mind that you prevail. Make it not a debate, make it fact and a harm. To document it, to hit the right, right process. Now you're going to be effective, and, you'll, and you don't have to complain no more. Well, your complaint will be there, but it'll be in a form that's readily acceptable. And it has to be that way because people get argue, they argue about this. Well, it means you agree with the system. Well, there's a certain way we have to communicate. And they don't want a bunch of blatherers to go in and, and talk about a bunch of nonsense. When you lay it out by the rules, if you look at the rules for that, it's really not that bad. Our problem is that we got lazy. When they told us about writing good book reports and science reports in school, yeah, that was the that was what we should have picked up on. As, as much as I hated doing it, as much as I got my first slap down around science and fraudulent science around doing one of those, I still did them, and I still learned how to do them. Well, I'm fine now. We're going back to that. You go to any kind of a complaint, you do it properly. It's doing these very formalized these formalized things. You draw a thing, you draw things out. You make your facts. You make your conclusions. You draw it all out. You'd make it a proof, not a debate. And so here's a, now we talk about it's not just metal oxide, it's aluminum metal oxide. This is trimethyl aluminum. And so this is an organo aluminum. This is an organic compound that does these things in the air. And they, when it gets the atmosphere, it turns to smoke. Where have you seen that in the skies, folks? It's not for me to say I'm pointing out you have evidence here of the crime. A crime. I'm not saying it's, it's anywhere. You have to put that connection next. I'm saying you now get to, you didn't know it before. You can understand what the government does with these chemicals. I don't know about you about strontium and barium in the air. I don't know you know about barium. They put that you make you drink your barium when you go to an do X-rays because it's a good. Uh, it blocks. Um, I think it blocks the 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 
the uh, x-ray, or I can't remember. It, it does something so that it concentrates the x-ray to, to a spot they can see the barium you've taken. So it's doing that in the upper atmosphere, and don't forget the interaction. They say it ionizes, don't forget about the interaction with the cosmic rays, likely what it causes all your clouds. And so, the, at least the formulation of the nuclei, okay, this is particles. Okay, so there's a whole dynamic you can learn about, or you can complain. You can all point out all the pictures you see with all the crisscross you know, chemtrails or contrails, persistent contrails. They're not contrails. Anybody who's looked up long enough has seen contrails as well as seen persistent contrails, as NASA wants to tell you. But they also say that these same chemicals that, are, that they're finding everywhere in the atmosphere and on the ground do this type of thing. Now, what's that doing? And what are these, these chemicals doing in jet fuel? is not just a question. You can prove that it is there, and then you can keep going. Then you use your tests on the ground to prove that it does touch the ground. And then we go to the back point of that they're doing this without even knowing. These are not these are global scientific experiments. They're not supposed to be using you as a guinea pig. And there's a notice provision inside the chat title 50. Go through there to say they didn't have the right to do this. Now, they're going to listen to you, but at least you start making the proper course of action so people can see what that is. And you don't sound like a... You don't sound like some lunatic, some tin tin foil hat wearing lunatic. And when they call you one, you get them for that felony I tell you about to try and avoid their duty and obligation. You nail them right there. And so there's a whole method of things that you get to do that I keep suggesting that's more than what I hear people believing they're doing when when they do it like they thought they were doing it before. It is a lot of work. I mean, one of those book reports was not fun. I just I despise doing them, but. You find the imp it's important when you're trying to convey an idea, especially if it's your findings on something. And, and isn't it that cool in a way that we, we can link that up to courts where they say that this writing, this authoritative writing, becomes evidence? It's not just your opinion. It's just not some witness that can be uh, can be countered. Uh, so anyway, right in the news, you have uh, you have what's going on. Uh, they know what these chemicals do. They do. They do. I looked at that, and they said they're admitting that they do interactions with your atmosphere. What's that? Has that been checked? And if they're doing this coming out of the airplanes, and what? Then the pervasiveness of this. What's that doing to all of us? You have a thread and a a, ca a causal link between what's going on by what they're officially saying, uh, while they deny in other areas. You break through those denials. If you're not thinking this way, you're probably never going to be effective. These people really have gotten, they're not perfect, but they're relatively sophisticated. They, they have a certain set of things that they do that, that work, like deny, 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 don't answer. It's, it's the two that work. So you have to tease out a lot of this stuff. You don't make it up. You just tease it out, and you put it together in ways that hasn't been done to prove and go after the thing that they're all attempting to avoid, apparently. Otherwise, why are they? what are they doing? Why are they denying on one hand that they don't do it, and on the other hand they're using it? And saying what they're using it for. And so here they got all this stuff being sprayed, apparently, and we've got the soil test to do it, and I'm not going to get into all the chemtrail stuff. But you guys can do that. We've got other things that I'm focused on. What I hear coming out of that is, oh, look at all the chemtrails were being poisoned. Instead of working out how to stop it in a formal, formulaic way and a formative way, and yes, that's there because it, if you don't do it that way, well, you're not really efficient either, and you don't communicate the idea. If you look at what they're trying to tell us to do, it's it's a good way to convey an idea, nice and concise and, and to the point. Like I say, you make your proofs, you put those in appendix, you you you, you lead with your your bullet points. When I finally got that idea understood, not that I made it up, I just went back to it. When I finally understood how you do a proof, you reduce it to bullet points, present that, because nobody wants to read more than a piece of paper, one sheet of paper. That's what they tell you. And you might as well just go ahead and agree, because they've already put it in their mind, that's all they're going to read. You put it in a pe one sheet of paper, you put your bullet points, but then you refer to the stack of evidence in, a, in a, an appendix. You have at least got the comment supported by the evidence. Now you set it in a nice bullet point form, of what they're going to read, and then you got them for disregarding what they were going to read when it's nice and clear. And anybody, even a two, a three, four-year-old, whatever, however you'll be knowledgeable enough to know what you're seeing. This is chewing gum. You understand what chewing gum is, Johnny? Yes. Okay. Three years old. When you got it like that, and I, I mean, sometimes it takes one and a half pages, and then you attach your appendix onto the, all your addendum of the proof. 
And now the burden's on them. It's a much better way to approach the, any of the stuff than just I watch people complaining about the fact of about the fact of these things going on. Going on. So they're spraying all this stuff. We now see that it ionizes these same chemicals that are spraying in these. They're coming, not coming out of the jets that they're deny, that they deny is coming out of the jets. It does exactly. These chemicals do exactly by their own words what we see coming out of the jets. We test in the ground. It's all this stuff's in the ground. And then we I hear this, which is a double problem. It says, so, okay, so now we know that this stuff is coming out of the ground. It's not new either. Uh, we, we, again, the humic acid thing, we get back to gardens. Uh, isn't it fancy, uh, fascinating that now, uh, I guess in Florida, this, the Florida Senate has passed the fact that you can have a vegetable garden in your in your front yard or on your grounds. Now, the problem with that, the caveat is, they still held out the problem of the people who originated this, which is to housing associations. And I want to recall this back to you because you start to look at title to land and who has control of the land. And when you're in a housing association, you don't have control. And the, and the law, the so-called law, brings this into, into bear, and you have to say it. Here's my point about this. So you're going to go and you, you don't respond to the now chemistry that's in the air falling on the ground. But you go grow food now that Florida allows you to grow at your land, which your land rights should have given you. Look at, aside now from the housing association question, where an association actually runs the land. You don't. You're really renting from that association. You don't have direct connection to the land or by rent. Rent uh, directly to the landowner by the patent or the uh, disposal uh, certificate of, of evidence. You you get to now, uh, the Florida Senate ha has told you you now have the right to grow vegetables. Now, to me, that's completely a super superfluous law when you look at law. It's actually just a policy. <laughs> and so they had to enact it because the the, the, sur the the slaves, the prisoners, the system wouldn't allow those. But in your land rights, you had that a pertinent to the land right was growing your own food. In fact, interfering with that is, you can look into federal law, is sabotage. And so we, we already have a body of law that says you have the right to grow food on your land. No, what have I told you also was coming? It's getting so ridiculous. It's so lawless. There's so little of reflection in, in objective basis that you're going to have to go to the legislature, the people. That's the whole people, not you. Remember, in a democracy, you're represented by them. You don't have a right. Now, you have to go to the legislature now to get every law, anything you thought was normal, what you thought was right, was supposed to be settled in law, you're going to have to make a law for it. Florida now is the first state I've seen to make that so. A right that's already in the land, they had to say you get to have that right. Shows you you're not a people that know your property rights, your land rights, or actually are, are really, uh, you should be, a that um, you deserve, you deserve this so-called free freedom. And you see the definition of freedom working in there, where you're living in a frame of constraint that declared by the by the one who owns the frame. And now they've said you could grow food, grow food. And I can show you right in your in your disposal laws that all these governments were were supposed to protect the growing of food. It wasn't supposed to be a question. Is your problem in this country, the United States of America, that this law exists, tell, perfects what I told you? The most simple stuff that's already in law is going to have to be redeclared in law because no one follows anything. It's like our memory ended yesterday. And no one's fighting to stop to have to have this done. This has been legalized, you understand. Something that sits in your land law. Something that if you interfere with as an organ of anybody, it's sabotage. It's under war. This is under war powers, if you go look at that. So understand the, the special. You know, the, we're special on the yellow bus. This is a special thing here, this land law in, in the United States of America. And so I, would, I want to point out, this is no, those of you that are getting involved, this is what you're looking at. You have a couple of ways to go here. You either assert your property rights up front, like I asked everyone to do. You bring your title and you show how the other parties are interfering. They're officially interfering. That's felonies, as I explained to you before. It should be in every state. Yeah, look for extortion, look for coercion, and look for conversion, whether that's instated or as the courts will apply both extortion and coercion together happening becomes conversion in in a couple states. You apply that to their officialness, and now you're going to have some. Let's go to the housing association just quickly. You're not owning of the land, and you're conditioned on, a, on, a, on an agreement. You don't have the right to assert that. For those of you that are there and didn't know that, just sell out. Move out to someone who could handle 
of living on someone else's land. You're not even a renter there, as I can tell. Most rents don't, renter, renter's contracts, I've noticed, don't have, you can't grow food. I guess, I mean, maybe in a, maybe in a high rise, but I'm saying that most normal properties, you know, I haven't seen that they say you can't grow your own food. But housing associations and things like that and places uh, where you might buy, a, have a trailer or whatever, you don't have title to that land and there's a constraint on your use, that's what you're subject to. And they've said that, as I understand this. But anyway, th my point on this was, so they're going to let you now in Florida uh, veg do your own vegetable garden. That, that was a pertinent right. Nobody in Florida apparently knows that you have that pertinent right. And so now it's been legalized. It's astonishing to me. Look at all the work and energy they put into this when they didn't have to. It's the problem. It's the same problem with the miners. I tell you, all this is the same stuff. It's the same wrong answer. It's all driven also by special interest. It's also driven by the lawyers. It's, in this case, driven by an ignorance of the people that I think were in a housing association who were told they couldn't have an art. They could have all the other wasteful all the plants in the front yard, but a garden was forbidden in that housing association. And they fought it. And they lost. <laughs> so the legislature had to come in and say, no, you get to, you get to actually... Uh, grow food, and then you look inside and well, but you can't grow food on the housing association that was made for these people. They, made, they came in to try and help these people. Shows you complete stupidity. S t o o p i d i t y. Stupidity in, in this in the people of this nation. And I just have to shake my head. I don't even know what to where to go without uh, else with that. And no one certainly listened in the next state listens enough behind the woodshed to understand uh, what they could have done. Also, I know there's a guy I used to communicate with. Uh, he's over there in Florida. He's an excellent guy working on a code pleading. He works right through the statutes to show you. It's all it's like I explained it to him. Yeah, you're, you're, let me show you what I've show, what you're found about that keeps the government away from you is these principles here. And he was able to adopt those into what he does. It's all in the statutes, folks. That they're supposed to not not involve themselves here, but no one understands this. How ignorant we are as a people. How easily we have sold away our heritage. For what? I don't even know if it was a bowl of pottage as we hear. It, it, it's some fiat thing, and then the and the whip. Ex, you know, extortions of every kind. This is what we we sold ourselves out to. And so, I just wanted to point out right here is what I told you is coming. You're going to have to get laws that recognize the, the the fact, unless you can change the minds of people in the in the system making these decisions. And in like in thick like ticks, parasites. If you can persuade them to either drop off or change their tune not be the tick, and then recognize these things in the law already. It's like these savings clauses sit there to that, that I tell you about to protect you. If you start relying those up front, as I talked about, there was a question that came back. Somebody lost their, uh, lost. he's dead now, he had b fighting his property against the EPA, and the guy wa had a mistrial that was done to, shown to me, I think uh, Ranchero 42 was bringing this to me, and uh, he he won the mis or he got a mistrial. The first they hit him again. The EPA he got convicted for putting ponds, fire ponds, on his own property. And I, my response to that is these attorneys don't properly put law a uh, property law forward. They don't evidence the property. They don't also collaterally attack those that are trespassers. That includes the government and show how the governments, all governments in this regard, local that would come in, have no reserved authority. The reservations to be able to attack, and they're all the also further obligated have an obligation and duty to protect. That's another violation. But attorneys will not support that. You, as a property owner, have to do that, and not just in land. That's how you do everything you identify as a property. And I'm, uh, I, I said uh, Vince is saying I said easily. I may have be careful. I might have said actually said easily. I'm going to rush those together, Vince. If not, I apologize. I'll try not to do it again. Not. So, we go... Um, to me, it's just a, it's just a big joke. I look at the tabs, it's a big joke one way or the other. Uh, you know, I don't even know what more to say. It's, it's answerable in different ways. It's not that big a conversation. I actually say more words than we, it would take to really respond to it. We're doing so much make work that's not needed, that's already answered in law, that we don't assert. No, we, we believe we know more, we know what ought to be, instead of just saying, well, yeah, okay, these statutes are sitting there, and yeah, we know that they're, they're only policy, but they have saving clauses which speak to the law, not their policy. 
We don't, we don't have a thought about how this thing works, and we don't work that through, all of us that are so intelligent about this stuff, to refine our problem into a real, not such a big problem. It's just that we're not asserting the right thing, and the system is set up to take advantage of that. I mean, in big ways, in big ways. So we can continue to not know our rights. We can, we're can we to the time because we don't know those rights. We don't know to tell people to stay off our property and you can't do this. We don't know enough when we don't have those rights to say, yeah, we've got in the wrong spot. Maybe we should just pull stakes and move. I can't live inside a housing association and have a right if I, my whole life is conditioned by their policy. If I want to do that, I have to go find a different place to live. And now I'm more wise, I'll go get another base place to live where I've done the due diligence in the property side, titles, to see that I have the right and it's defensible against the whole world, as the patents will tell you are extendable to rents if they're not reserved away. And again, as they're granted in the, in the patent document, some things are reserved away. So anyway, I won't go into all that. We can do the case by case. It's everyone's a case by case basis, and I say the more I've done this, exactly what that the truth is there. Every time I get a property case to look at or answer a question, everyone is different. It doesn't doesn't matter what they seem to be. It's everyone's different. So each property is as distinct in its conditions and statements and problems as any other one. And so you see the power now coming <laughs> if you just see it that way. And these are saving clauses in the statutes, not not to be interfered with. But I would actually say that that homegrown law, uh, if it made inference, implication that it did limit the right appurtenant to the land disposal in Florida, that can be enjoined if they tried to come after you anyway. And remember, if you do that, they will try to put on a recent code. You have to go back to your the the doctrine of the relate the relation back doctrine that your rights relate back to the instrument that, that evidences your holding. And that may be through a rental contract through to the patent or the patent state certificate patent that's evidence of what you own and have right to do. And so you that can be asserted as a collateral attack against a felonious act. And so there's if that law limited, legalized the actual use and the rights you have, that the extent that it limited is actually can be enjoined as well. But nobody in Florida apparently is knowledgeable enough about that. I'm kind of astonished a little bit that the legislature would actually make a bill that said that, which shows you it has to be done to keep all the the, many, the bureau rats controlled, when the actual impetus was someone who was on a homeowners association that didn't have the right and didn't know that. And I'm not a, this is not a judgment against anybody. This is just you don't know it, and so you act, and you use a lot of expense, and they got beat down, and then maybe rightfully so at some level. I don't. Again, I can't even say that truthfully because I don't know their contract. Although in the story it says that they were prohibited, so I have to take that as I see it, without without analysis from the distance. Given that's the case, yeah, they didn't even have the right, and yet now there's a law out perfecting what I told you. It's so stupid out there that you have to have laws that tell you you get to do what you already have a right to do. Now, that ought not happen, but folks, it is. That's the point. It wouldn't happen if we were a, a body of a, a mass of people that understood and educated in, in the rights and how they're implemented. And that would also have to have an understanding of the overthrow of those and how that was done. And then we get back to the bar and things like that. So here we, so now over those in Florida, you get to grow food in your own yard. Great, fantastic. But look what it took to get there, and it shouldn't have even been something. It should have been focusing on uh, something more important. And so those of you that are going to grow on land, let's move on a little bit more. More confirmation about uh, the Slayer's Monsatan's products. ATSDR report uh, confirms glyphosate cancer risk. So you got the stuff that they're spraying in the sky landing on your ground. And now they got uh, stuff you'll, they'll get you to buy uh, to put spray on your ground or your neighbor to uh, spray on your ground. And they're now more proof about this glyphosate that reinforces, as it says in this story, again, I'm telling you what I'm reading. You would back up, back what I'm saying up by going to the doc document and track back through to make sure that this is all correct, doing your own thought on your reading, not using their thought on it. But uh, Monsatan and, and Slayer, a glyphosate product, has 
been tested in a in a registry that confirms an international agency research uh, for a research study on cancer and uh, corroborates that condition. So those of you that are growing your own food and think you're going to go to GMO weeds and beans and whatever and corn, uh, you're going to be care you should be careful about this glyphosate. Maybe you should go back to what's normal and maybe go through your si soil cycling systems and and, and amendments, uh, natural amendments to build up your soil so that they naturally can fight off what you what you're up against. So, anyway, uh, so we got this again our uh, toxic world, uh, and we get the now we get the do-gooders to come in and use the toxic world they're creating uh, to work against you uh, for your to protect you. And we get this next uh, report again, the so-called best science of vehicle pollution quote results in four million children asthma child asthma cases uh, a year. So the, the thing I'm tying this in here, it's not like uh, some of this stuff, I don't even know why I talk about it. You, you all can go find this stuff. But I wanted to show you how you tie this stuff together a bit. And I'm not saying you can't do it or you don't do it already. I, I just don't see much reflection of doing this that I think would empower us big, big time. Remember, there's we got all the, the stuff coming out uh, of the jets. And they say, well, when this material comes out, it turns to white smoke. Uh, we're just hitting the air. It's very dangerous to work with, in fact. Uh, they know that now we also have sprays coming in the air. We also have all kinds of things going on in the environment. And yet this story comes out and says, vehicle pollution results in 4 million child asthma cases a year. Well, I already told you, science so-called, and these are studies of studies, right? Uh, they're just political lobbyists. So I come with a, a real critical eye to all these things. And I would predict something because of the politics and the political lobbying that goes on and this is a, from a site, Eco Daily. we're probably going to be talking and attacking vehicles, right? Pretty much vehicle pollution, that's the cause, they say. And we're going after to protect the children. Remember, women, children, and the indigenous is the UN agenda method of destruction. And boy, these asthma cases are, are, are 4 million kids a year doing these little goats are getting asthma because of vehicle pollution. Let me just ask something. How did they know that? How did they how did they take in this in this scientific study and eliminate every other thing such as what folks the first thing in your mind would come up with a 87 percent comp uh, compliance rate but vaccines how about pharmaceuticals how about just regular pollution in other ways? Just other pollution. How about lifestyle? How about any number of things? How did they come up and isolate in all this world vehicle pollution to actually attribute it to 4 million uh, ch children a year? Should have been your first question. And we can see that that negates that just that view alone. They're focusing here on nitrogen dioxide. And they'll give you a whole world what it does. But how did they isolate that uh, out? And then you get to the point of what they are di they're after. Uh, they're now pointing out the diesel motor, diesel gate. And they wanted, they're talking about the greenhouse gas, so now we're into climate change. And now you realize we're now, we're using the women, the children, the indigenous on a political agenda on something that they could not have isolated out as a cause. But they claim it's a landmark study that shows massive global burden of asthma in children caused by traffic pollution. Remember, you know, the ICUN was the international uh, horde of international trespassers. They don't care about borders. These people make uh, an excuse that there's a global threat. They, how about those chemtrails, folks? Did they, did they eliminate those? How did they eliminate? If this thing is a global problem, how did they eliminate all this stuff to say the vehicle a pollution was the causative factor. In fact, you read through this article. You need, I mean, I say, you know, you don't have to read none of this, and you can just take my word for it, but when you read it, you realize how they're pulling, they're tugging on the, the ring in your nose. And I, it's important you understand how they do that. You need to see it, because that gets you the power, the, the cognitive power, to cut through the stuff in the title, you go right to it, and you say, "Okay, that's not going to give me what we need. Let's go read it for a couple of things real quick, confirm they're there, and move on because we got bit work to do, good work to do, not this nonsense where we buy into this or we even buy into the fact that it's a deception." 
we confirm that they continue the same method because we keep track of that because we're going to have to answer to that at some point. And you go through the study and they'll tell you. This has to do with the climate change and we're going to go to zero pollution vehicles or what they're going to be going to is what? Zero emission vehicles, which are what? E-vehicles, electrical cars. Right? Are those are those zero pollute zero emission? No. They found they've proven all alone their brake systems put out more because they're heavier cars need more brakes, blows more dust. Found out that's carcinogenic. What happened to the oh we're not gonna cause that? You don't think that's causing asthma? No, no, it's causing cancer. We don't care about that apparently. But there's no reason behind this. They're just pushing zero emission vehicles. What's that going to push, folks? These e cars, what's that push? AI e cars, what's that push? They have to communicate with those cars. It's pushing 5G. Do they talk about all that? No, that's the other method. See, they just get you to think about that. They let you prepare the seed. So when they come along, like we have told you, the impetus for the federal government on 5G is one of two things. And the one thing you're focusing, they're focused on is autonomous vehicles for 5G. Not helping you. They could care less. You use it. It's for them to surveil you, but for their cars, they need this high frequency, high bandwidth uh, interaction. This is the future, folks. They're bringing it to you right now. You're going to stand there and listen to this nonsense and just complain, oh, that was a stupid report? No, you can't just sit there and, know, be, and, and sit glorious in your knowledge of it. You have to compile this in, in a way that you can then make a dossier, if you will, of the crime. And where you see you have the opportunity to make a statement, go make that statement if you do nothing else. And then you then you pay, babysit the statement. I mean, that's all that, that administrative side stuff is. What does that do? It puts you in the game. It's the objection you could make through, let's say, chemtrails. If not chemtrails, you don't have to say, listen, they just said that they put this, this stuff in. We know that it's in the air. I see the same effect. That You need to stop that. So you can tell me you're not poisoning me. And you engage, you engage in the battle. And you do it in a way that you're not having to prove anything. But you're there to witness against it. And so here's a pretty much, uh, they're going after the cars. They're going to give you a reason why, oh, so many asthma cases, uh, folks. I mean, GMO chicken, I know I know some people that respond to GMO chicken. You know, they're a GMO chicken. Yeah, well, when they ate the feed that was GMO, they became GMO chickens. And I know people, and I've done tests. I've done tests. You get a chicken that you know is ranch, you know, ranch, land, raised, whatever, no GMO, or versus one you buy at the store that they either don't tell you or you know is being commercially fed, and people who don't, people will have responses to that. It doesn't take much. I don't need to prove. I just know that when I feed somebody a chicken that does that, and all of a sudden they're wheezing all night and having trouble breathing, and I don't, and I feed a chicken another time when they don't, maybe I should stop feeding the chicken that causes that. I don't even care what it is in there that's doing it, right? And this is, again, our power, and if you could say call us consumers, what we consume, what we accept, and then what we digest, and then what that does for us is all this process that's being worked against us. So, Another thing that goes, uh, the asthma in kids, not a good deal. That is caused by vehicles as a, as a political lobbying propaganda to get you to believe that these electric cars, essentially it, autonomous cars are needed and why you're going to have to agree to 5G because apparently asthma is better than cancer or asthma is better maybe than autism or anything else that's immune system function related to destroy your, your, your little ones and essentially control their future, your future. Remember, you're dealing with your little one. You're not dealing with these these insane psychopaths that run run this show. Uh, and this next story comes up here. Who's behind the 5G call of humanity? So here we make big promotion about the asthma and the child tied to the diesel. It's not. I don't have any any in these places that that's running for the most part, except for the corporate the, the corporate fraud. We've seen a big, a big increase in cleanup of a lot of these things. So they didn't even factor in that change as well uh, that I could tell. So there's all kinds of things to look at. Not to say, oh, we know so much, oh, that, and just to say, oh, that's a fraud. No, you have to then take that, document it, and give it to someone who has the duty to respond. And when they don't, then you go after that. Uh, this game is work. This, this is a, a multi-step game, and you've got to look into how the process works. Who's behind the 5G call of humanity? Well, they're promoting the 5G 
through promoting that asthma is going to the kids and it's caused by cars, and uh, impliedly we're going to have to go to these zero emission. You know, they're, they may be zero emission. Is the 5G tower zero emission? See, it all depends on what you focus on. See, they're talking about uh, chemistry. Now we're talking about electromagnetism. Uh, the story about uh, came up. Uh, who's behind the 5G calling man? I might have gotten this through Gary Ellis. It just strikes me. But what was in this is very interesting. You actually need to get this uh, article from the blogcaster. Who's behind the 5G call of humanity? You can type that in and get it yourself as well. You need to go through and look at this because what was this talking about the reservation clauses and the uh, and things was was back in this. I think I've talked with Gary L on this a long a while back, relative to something called uh, he read and someone had interpreted as uh, maybe the golden share. It was someone's looking into these connections with all these governments and corporations that are involved in in defeating you through these mechanisms. Uh, that uh, decided could see that there was this lingering connection that he called a golden share, a share in a corporation which was actually a controlling share, notwithstanding anything the document said. This article touches on that. It also touches on 5G. It touches on uh, who's involved and how they're involved. And in particular, this one corporation called SERCO, a powerful British company close to Lockheed Martin, GEMBAE. I cannot remember right now when I was talking with Gary whether or not this is that corporation, but this is the indicative of the connections that you'll have to track down that inadvertently, I think, unless he did, I don't know that he's done the work to track it down this way. You look at the corporate charters or how their, their formation documents and you find and you're looking for the reservation. In other words, what this guy found, he did this study and found what they called the golden share. It's this share that's just untouchable. It's golden. It's untouchable. When I saw what they were taught, what, 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 what Gary was telling me, I said, "No, that's a reservation here. Let me show you where it's at in the Constitution." Why? Because when well, they talked about this, the SERCO is a British company. It's also tied to the Crown, the Queen, Queen Elizabeth, through through their shares. And so this is an interesting story when we start looking at where the what's the battlefield here. This is a much bigger story and tale, and sometimes we—I'm not going to be able to take out, you know, take care of the queen to stop it, or whatever the organizations that have been set up to do. But I can look in my local jurisdiction and say what they were supposed to do. Like I've told you, how you attack your um, what was the smart meters, how you attack the the commission, uh, the utility commission on the rollout of those, or even the acceptance of 5G. It's a multiple step a process that you have to start following there. If you don't, you're going to lose. You're just screaming to the wind, and you're going to have come on you what's going to come on you. But this is a little story. Who's behind 5G? Well, they're promoting all this 5G through. Did they mention 5G in the prior study? No. They want to get your pull your heartstrings about all the asthma asthma kids. But that's what they're promoting when you finally get to the bottom dollar, and you get that to the end of the report. You get to start talking about it. Like, like you get near the end of this story about they're using certain chemicals that are in the sky that do certain things, and you look up at a jet, it's doing the same thing, except you don't see the colors. And you see what they use that for in one way. And there's more ways I've told you back, I don't know, maybe what, what was it, 15 or 16, excuse me, it was um, eight or nine years ago I told you about this uh, humic acid thing. Remember, all this, these chemicals, ionization chemicals, they're actually... The higher the frequency, the more, and the smaller the particle, the more apt they are to be interacting. This is a little throw out there. So, what I find interesting with this rollout and push out, who's behind all this? We have a story about all oh, the poor kids in asthma, but we're going to go out, we want zero emission cars, which are actually electric cars that go on 5G. And we look at another story coming out of here, the, 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 who's calling everybody with this 5G? And you see part of the, the history research. Again, don't take this guy's word for it. Go through the study, use it as a template to go do your own research and connect the dots, create your dossier, and then you present it where it needs to be presented for the purpose. In other words, I've told you, people can be 100% right and be irrelevant. I've heard a couple of examples, especially people that I admire a lot. I want to make sure that I identify that because I don't want them to make that mistake. I want them to be 100% right on relevant things. They can have them be 100% right on something irrelevant, but they don't push it. It sits back waiting for a time to be stated. I want you to be there, 100% right on relevant, pertinent and material things. What did I just do there? The basic three rules of evidence. Something has to be relevant, pertinent, or material. 
If it's irrelevant, impertinent, immaterial, nah, it doesn't fly. No evidence. And so, a little simple, little standard. Did I make that up? No, that's in the rules of evidence. It's the rules we've got to follow. Why? Because it's been, over time, proven. But if you follow this method this way, you speak efficiently and you prove your point. Or you don't. And it's fast and easy to see. So, but who's behind 5G? Fascinating study. I think it touched on what I was talking with Gary L. It points out this reservation authority. It shows it's in the, in the shares. It shows it's corporate. It's the nested Russian nested dolls, but on a, on a scale, mind-boggling scale. It always seems to point back to the same, a couple of authorities. It's always inside this golden share of authority that was reserved in the United States of America in Article 6. So, let's let, I'll let, I rested that for a moment there. I want you to think about how this starts to pull together. And am I saying that I know that absolutely? No, this is really, I can just point to the evidence and the dots. I can get them very, very close, but I'm not the one that wrote those documents, so I can't tell you that they do that. I can tell you the effect it has, and sometimes that's good enough. But remember, an official standard, and this is the thing, I don't know if we're going to get to it, maybe we will. The official standard of activity is the, is the mere appearance of impropriety. You don't even trespass the mere appearance of impropriety. Can you appreciate that standard? I don't know if we truly, I truly appreciate the limit of that, but can you appreciate that standard that's being mowed down left and right? When you look at things like the Assange deal, and you look at things like any of these uh, agencies and the interference and the revolving doors and all this stuff, the, criminal, the psychopaths and criminals are having their way, and none of you will do more than... Rub your little feet under your rock. It's fascinating. It's all here to be put, proven out. And, and more people working together on projects can do faster. That's why I've been telling you. You don't have to do this on your own. We're going to have to start on our own because there's not that many people. But once you get together and you all start picking, you start picking the carcass of this thing, it goes pretty quick. Rockefeller to wind down biggest private climate resilience push was a fascinating thing to come up all at the same time. They're still pushing this climate thing through the cars and the reduction of greenhouse gases and the blaming of, the, of, of vehicles for the asthma. Don't, don't look at it, what pharmaceuticals does. Don't look at what GMOs does under the biodiversity tree. Don't look at any of that. Forget all that. But Rockefeller Foundation is pulling funding uh, and to dis will dismiss staff at 100 Resilient Cities programs, the largest privately funded climate adaptive initiative in the United States. Rockefeller will shift some of its resilience funding to the Atlantic Council, a Washington-based think tank with a $30 million grant to the Council's Adrian Erst Center of Resilience, the foundation center in a press, a press release. Rockefeller also announced a $12 million grant to allow continued support and transition time to the 100 Resilient Cities networks through much of 2019. I guess I can stop reading. There's more to read, more to understand. There's a hundred cities out there that Rockefeller has been, the foundation has been supporting to attack you. They name a few here, Boston, Miami, New York, Los Angeles, big cities, big things about climate change and the threats related. They're no longer going to support the resilient cities. They're going to have a two-year two -year transition time. I'm going to tell you folks, if you're in those cities or anywhere around those cities, this is your time to jump back in and take out all the infrastructure they built. There's not going to be anybody watching the towers of the thing they thought, the network they built, and these people are already in your cities destroying you. They talk, they say it in this story that these uh, uh, these transition officers are in this are going to be keeping their offices for two more years, but they're being phased out and they're moving into uh, the uh, an interesting place of jobs and economic opportunities. Here is a here is a statement ahead of notice to you if you're involved with Agenda 21, the code enforcement problems, all this stuff we're seeing coming down as far as the all whatever the modernization acts are. There's a shift going on. They're moving into jobs and economic opportunities. They're doing that problem. I don't know why they're doing that. It's conjecture. They're doing that because that's where the next focus is when they want to make everybody talk about jobs or they want to talk about it being a good thing. But the infrastructure for the resilience part is being weakened. It's time for you all to jump in there, too. Now, you don't understand what I just said. If you, don't know, if you haven't been following what I'm saying, and a lot of you don't, I'm telling you that this is a notice that they're making a transition to something that something has happened, whether it's been people like 
the, my colleagues and myself and others like us pushing hard and really causing this question to come up and making it way more difficult. So they're going to they're going to kind of go back, hide back in the darkness, and they're going to pop up and try to make it look like they're doing jobs. This is a big one. Locales will have these uh, jobs and, and economic development agencies. They're nothing but a subversion. They suck a lot of money from your local counties, and they really do nothing to involve the jobs. In fact, they promote everything that's other than jobs when you look at them, like tourism, the things that what you would see would, uh, would, would uh, advance sustainable development, in other words, sustainable de debt and modernization into what they call post. How do you modernize in postmodern? Is the stupidity behind all this. But what they do is they're taking you away from your laws that now make it required, like in Florida, to say, oh, yeah, you get to have the right to grow food in your land. I don't know if people appreciate how stupid that sounds. That We are in that day, like I told you. You literally have to have laws that tell you. You, get, you have to have permission now. Because there's nobody, apparently, that wants to assert that there is no authority to interfere in other things and then really impose what a limited form government is. No, no, you'd rather not do it than to complain how wide expansive the psychopaths have become and call that government. It's nothing of the sort. It's not even governance. It's just open crime, organized crime. And so getting back to the Resilient Cities Foundation, uh, the uh, Rockefeller Foundation is pulling back, folks. I, think, I thought this is very important to understand. Uh, the, maybe you don't understand the importance of this, but I'm telling you, but when they're pulling back and moving money somewhere, they either think they've got it or uh, they are losing it. And I'm going to look at it in either way. I'm going to look at the worst case. They think they've got it. So I'm saying, you, all of you that are listening, that you and all this global network of cities that are coming together, again, there's no borders here in this global governance thing. It's all to bring in the sustainable debt. The weapon is climate change. They want to be resilient against that. Uh, and then you come in now, and they're not going to have anybody protecting it, and now attack this thing in the law. I'm not talking about attacking somebody with a stick or a, a baton. I'm saying you walk in with the law and you explain because there's not going to be anybody there now to defend it. They got over on us. They got position on us. Now we come in a little bit late, and but we come in and we give them. We now become the influence. There's a whole lot more of y'all than there are those people that are being, well, there's only 86 that they had, six people that pulled all this off in 100 cities, it looks like, when you look at the report. Okay, but they and they're honorable. They're going to honor their two-year contracts, even though they're already pulling back. These people know how to treat their people. They're going into a new phase. There's a reason for it. I haven't done enough research to find that out. Some of you could. Some of you could, and then you would be ahead of these people. The point is, they're moving troops out, whether they think they've solided it up and it's fine. You get to now attack it. There's not going to be anybody there, and they're telling you that. Okay, it's not. This is not pretty interesting. I get kind of excited in a way. I wish I wish I had the knowledge of where these people were. We got to have to find them by accident, and then we got to deal with that as we see them. These are the influencers inside uh, the cities that are bringing this stuff. The smart cities and stuff. A hundred cities are going to be open to being brought back to the time when the government, the local governments, did what they were supposed to do. You could be the voice for what that is, not your voice. You go to the laws, you go to the black and white, you go to the things that sat before this intrusion that makes it look like the government's been violating you, and it's a bunch of criminals. And you start to out, learn how to out that, and you could use a lot of what I'm saying as a start. I, again, I don't know what you're going to find for your own power. I mean, there's a lot of minds out there that I look around, I get pretty amazed at what's out there. It's like watching this ongoing IQ, IQ test. Well, that was pretty sharp. That was a sharp look at how to do that. That's That worked kind of nice. I like that. It didn't come to me. Come to someone else. See, together we, we get to appreciate. We get to work with that. I'm not the only guy with ideas, but I'm the only guy with ideas if I'm the only one in the trench or the guys, my colleagues with me. We're the only one in the trench. You can't see us. We're in the trench fighting. You're oblivious. And here we have a notice. They're going to be gone, folks. Something's happened. Whether they've really got the infrastructure settled and they think they got this, I don't know. But they're, they've found some pressure. And they're moving into something else. We're already there. To, I'll just tell you, the jobs and things, we're already there, too. It's really easy to defeat that. Go to the watershed level stuff, as I keep telling you about, in your land law, back where what land is supposed to be used. You could defeat these people here because all they can offer you is tertiary level uh, employment, not wealth driving primary economy. Remember, I've had that one quick discussion at one broadcast. 
right? Uh, again, on, on a lark, just happened to run across a website talking about it. Here it was. There was there's whatever I said. There's what everyone needs to actually understand regarding these economies and what the government actually speaks to. The government sitting in the tertiary economy. It's not even a primary. It's twice removed from wealth. And then we all wonder why they use fiat. No, it's all pretty simple. It's not even. A, I don't even think more about it. There it is. There's the answer. Why are we having more of a discussion? That's their Achilles heel, too. Why discuss it? We just use it when it's time. I put all this stuff in my back pocket. I use it when it's time. It terrifies these people. Again, they don't answer. I mean, they really, I don't know what's more to say. When you get somebody who has a duty answer not answering, maybe you don't push it any further, but isn't that much better than them coming on and beating it down? Maybe even killing you? And you're not talking, you're not talking all, have you heard, did I say sovereign citizen yet? No. No, I don't talk like that. I don't need to. Because we're not really sovereign in this... We have to live amongst each other. We have constraints. But they're not what we've been experiencing in the last many decades. If, I don't know, maybe even over 100 years. I don't know. Depends on what subject matter we're going to talk about. And so it doesn't matter, does it? I mean, today we got an oppression. Are we going to fight it? And I'm saying, okay, the way we've been doing it's not so good. Look at the examples of the failures. We don't want to go there. I'm here now over a little over 10 years, every week talking. I'm not going anywhere. That day could change. It could be fo something could focus on me. I may, may make a, state, a mistake. They want to shut me down a bit, load up my life with more work than I, than I can keep up with. It could happen. But this is the understanding, the dynamic of what's going on. So far, so good. So far, my feedback is the people that, uh, we'll listen and we'll do what they need to do relative to some suggestions and take it the step further, do their own research for their own good and their own stuff. They're all most for the most part they're okay that I can tell. I don't even know anybody that's been in trouble. I just know that so far it works better if you just kind of follow the, the path of what I've what I've seen is there. It's not my path. It's a narrow path, and you find that and you travel that. And I'm a path. Finder for you if you have a by subject matter, I can say here here's that path. Now now what you're studying is the is the borderline of that path, so that you don't walk away from the path and you know someone who's coming from the border you know they're a trespasser. You stay on the narrow path. Where are you going to get that? That's right in the stat, the objective basis. Otherwise we have no basis. It's anybody's opinion. And when you start getting off of that, and we start getting away. We start getting people. The cockistocracy rises up. I don't care what cock, I don't care what their ism is around their political beliefs and what their office is. Their office has an obligation and duty, and we're supposed to see some of this check and balance. And this time we do, even though we we won't research more than vehicles cause asthma. They won't look at a vaccine, and they will now make mandatory these things. When you look at the product data sheet, it's no good. When it, when someone finally stepped up and tested it and did it correctly. That vaccine problem that they were having, the um, the outbreak, the problem they're having in New York, can be ended by a lawsuit to enjoin the law. Judge rules in New York County can't ban unvaccinated children from schools and parks. I read this story last week about the fact that they had done it. I didn't speak about one thing last week. I was hoping maybe someone would come up with it as a discussion, and, and you didn't. And it's okay, I guess okay, maybe it's one ear out the other. Maybe it wasn't important enough. But see, I continue to think more on what is the, where is the actual authority? Not what they're doing. What's the actual authority? Or do they have it or do they don't? And so, we look at this thing I didn't talk about. What was the standard when they put a blanket? They're going to go after everyone and keep everybody out of the public area. What was wrong with that blanket, uh, uh, blanket approach? The judge rules in this county it can't be done. The problem is this judge, they don't speak to it in the context of the thing I didn't talk to you last week, hoping that someone would come up with it. Now this judge in this story here, now 10 years after the New York County ban unvaccinated children from public places in an effort to stem the rise of measles cases, a state judge put the injunction on hold. Children are, per, are hereby permitted to return to their respective schools forthwith, otherwise to assemble in public places. 
That's right out of the Constitution. What was so hard for these people? But see, there's, I've told you that they're going to do something. The, country, the governments are doing something. And you have to attack that. And it's not mentioned in this report. They do say that they, they give a little bit of the authority what the authority is. This is why I say you analyze what the stories are, the news, the notice to you, and you have to filter through it, critically think, and then find where it's supposed to be. Then you start to see what your authority really is. Then you make decisions relative to that authority. They point out here in this story that the, official author, the officials claim their authority was, uh, they had the ability to declare a state of an emergency. Announcing that the ban would remain in place for 30 days until the unvaccinated minors received the MMR vaccine to protect them against measles, mumps, and rubella. Unvaccinated minors, officials said, would not be permitted in close places like churches, schools, and shopping centers. You look at that, what did they do? They declared an emergency. What is that? That's police power. They also made a limit. 30 days. It can't be an indefinite thing. Right? That's not police power. So you start seeing the rule. They know what they're doing here. You need to analyze for this. They also limited it. They put a demand. Now we get to the question, can they do that? And then they said that a prohibition. They did a prohibition against whom? And here's the point. Does the police power extend to someone not causing the harm? No. Police power extends to the demonstrable exigence that can be identified as causing the harm. Who's causing the harm? The measles carriers. No, I'm not even talking about the vaccination. What I'm just talking about now, looking at the story we told, we can get involved, we can get overwhelmed, or we can start learning that these people have overstepped their bounds and how to bring our next case. It could be anything here. I'm looking at police power. In fact, I've, I've offered within, not outside like this, but within the police power of, the lo of a local county, they have the power to offset the problem that the Forest Service, which is federal, does in their, ter in their, in their jurisdictions through this power, properly asserted. And so you have to learn how to analyze for this stuff when you read these things. Why? Because you should be someone that's stepping up and arresting the excesses. That's our duty as living in this country. Otherwise, you allow crime. You allow the next, the, the next murder to happen. Uh, so they declare a state of emergency. That's police power. They gave a limit. That's fine. But then, then they said they claimed it was over limited spaces, but in fact, relative to the jurisdiction, that's the entire public space. That's not limited. And it attacked people that weren't the cause. That's why this thing was stopped. What do they have the right to do? The state has the right underneath this police power under medical conditions is to do what? What's the word? Starts with a Q. No, not the followers of the PSYOP. Q is the letter. It's quarantine. They quarantine the causal agents, don't they? Not the non-causal agents. They don't talk about anything in this story about it. What I want to tell you is how you read through this thing on what's missing, because they're educating people who don't put, engage their mind. And when you start to lay this out, you now have an understanding of the condition. And you can look at everything. You start to then exercise that in your mind on how you, that applies in everything they do. These they, these people that are in government, the bureau rats that want to say, oh, i got a code to come in force. They bring it by police power to abate a nuisance. Well, that's an area-wide causing thing, not just a property. Does anybody understand that the, if you don't argue that, then you have to come to the point where you've got to have the religious looters actually saying, oh, you get to grow food in your yard? To the limit of your rights? See how that works in the property? We're back to that. But So here's an interesting, I thought this was a fascinating story, what they didn't say, what they could have said, what, what they bring in, they talk about the anti-vax community, getting, com getting people completely off the authority, the underlying authority for this. And once you understand it, this thing was a dead letter coming out. The whole society should have jumped on this idiot who, who put this, uh, this thing out and said, wait a minute, you can't penalize. Where am I going with it? You can't penalize people that are not committing uh, the, the harm, the found, found cause. Well, isn't that the same thing they're doing with the same mentality they're doing with the carbon tax and jobs? Bill, green jobs. Remember that they were going to jobs and economics. That's where the Rockefeller's going. Green jobs, Bill. You think that's not coming in, folks? They're positioning for that. Do you think this is this is not the punitive damage for you being before due process declared the cause of the crime 
of the creator of carbon. The same thing here. You're, these non-causal agents, not, they're not even agents, non-causal people, they don't call them agents, people are being blamed and punished without due process. It's the same method. These people are psychopaths, cockistocracy in official places. And did I see, except for this court case, and the judge saying, wait a minute, you can't keep it pursuant to a line in the Constitution, never mentioning the underlying authority, at least by the story you're told. It's a complete failure here if you don't see it, and you missed it right by, and it was important for you to understand the underlying authority. Why? Because you have to be an educated mass of people that are willing to sit there and wait. You just you, you use your life, you live your life, but then you find the crime in an official. You attack it with all vengeance because it's not it's crime. I don't care how official it looks. So this is an interesting story. I thought to my to my mind, it actually reverses that thing for the for uh, that it was unlawful, but it doesn't explain the totality of what was at play here. And so I hope I've gone through quickly about that. You can go look at the story again. Look at it with different ways to analyze it. Just don't take the information. Work the information. It's, it's how you can actually start to work. It's the same method of being able to identify someone who's deceiving you. It's like the omissions to tell stuff you're looking for. I keep telling you, that's the hardest. The silence of a truth is very difficult to find sometimes. You have to have knowledge, real knowledge, not just made up stuff, not what you think ought to be. You have to take what is. And I just mentioned to you, without qualification of what all this authorita might be, there's certain reasons why the authorities are principled the way they are. Those are the things I've applied to you, for you, right here in this one story. And if you go back and listen to this, and you think about that, you'll I think you're you're you'll be readily available to say, yeah, that's that does make a lot of sense. And why didn't they originally do that? Why did they impose it the way they did? That's the real question. Why did they impose it that way when it's completely outlaw? I don't need a judge telling me this. I guess is the point. When it was completely out of line underneath the authority they proposed, the city said it was a state of emergency. That's police power. What there's a limit to even that. And there's a, again, I use the term, and more technical, it came out of a court case, I don't make this stuff up, demonstrable exigence, the demonstrated cause. You've got to have that. That's not someone who's not the cause. And so it failed in the first moment. And I didn't see anybody commenting, so I want to touch base. It's a very important uh, principle here, how this works and how they, mis they propagandize to you by omission. This is another style of fraud. You have to be aware enough. You know, I keep getting this word woke. Keep coming. You're not, folks. We're not woke. You have to be engaged. <laughs> you're not woke if you're not engaged. And evolutionarily so. Evolutionary engagement. Why? Because we've kind of been, we've been put in this place of, of um, well, not really dumbed down. It's just this place that's uh, not responsive. And it's uh, in an ignorance of some sort. We have to fight out of, our way out of We have to maintain and apply all these things 100% of the time. It can be considered a lot of work, but really once it's in your mind as a principle, I mean, once you figure out that you know, lying is a lot uh, lying is a lot of work, telling the truth is a lot, a lot less work, it's, it's that kind of like that. You just start applying the principle. And so, maybe enough here. The important important ruling to return that, I think New York came back and said, now we're going to go impose mandatory vaccines. Uh, I don't know if they have the right to do that on the non-causal part. Again, is anybody stepping up to say that? Does it going to take another lawsuit? Uh, then if you also do the color of authority thing and you do the uh, collateral attack, as I keep telling you, now you start giving yourself a power to go after those in a collateral attack under the color of their authority to harm you. Now they're privately liable. They, after you go after a few of these officials like this, they will stop, they will look more closely to what they believe that they have the power to do, and they'll be more accurate. Again, it's not calling out the crime or calling it out fast enough. It's not even doing it by an injunction because it doesn't say, uh, you see very quickly that even though they were told they can't, they're still going mandatory. That brings up a whole other thing, mandatory within the context of harms on the, on the data sheet. It's strictly stated on there that they're going to cause harm. What authority do they have? when I'm not a causal agent to force a harm on me. And I get a one step back before I even have to say, am I property that you can demand it? No. What authority do you have to force a harm on me? 
They're here by, proven, not by my opinion, not by the anti-vaxxer. No, it says right here on this data sheet from the company. And then you throw out the other things that have been found that are not there that link up with causation, like maybe genetics. What authority do they have, to, in a blind authority generally that they're supposed to apply to a police power, do they have to specifically target me, a non-causal uh, party, a non-causal agent that they would say, uh, vector, uh, to do something that's harmful? What authority do you have to do that? See, it, it fails right there. You don't have to worry about whether you're anti-vaxxer. You're using, the again, the, the pharmaceuticals uh, statement, the pharmaceutical company's statement of the harm. And so there's ways to go after this, folks. I don't see many people doing this kind of thing. And uh, as I say that, i got three or four things that pop in my mind, more directions. So th there's usually lots of things you can do that, that, don't, that won't bring this on you, but no one seems to, to run it out. And when it does happen, very few will do things as simply as run an in injunction away. And, and at that point, like I said, if you start moving the causation over to color, no, they can become liable. Now you start, because the costs can be exorbitant, unless you know how to do your own paperwork, you might be able to start getting your costs back. So it doesn't really, yeah, you got to have a little bit of upfront money. If you work with a good, I mean, someone who's a real lawyer that wants to advocate for law, maybe they'll do it pro bono anyway. And then they get their money, they know how to get their money from that kind of a condition. And so, more, more, op, uh, more opportunities to do it more correctly. We see how it was done there. We see all the things, as I'm showing you, or at least if you can accept that I've said everything correctly, or you go research and find that it is, uh, all the things that were not said that came to bear on that answer, not because it was in the Constitution, but based in the power that the, in the title of the power that the imp imposer was using. So you got it from a different angle, even the judge even touched on. I guess it's his prerogative to find one that defeats the case, but they were bringing, they had their, their answer was, was, uh, was police power. And so they, you see the dynamic here about the lack of answer, because now you don't know where can police power overcome the Constitution, and it can. And that's how you see the article. This is where you start to find out about the limitation in, like, the right of free speech, where you, again, the limitation is to your, again, one of the examples is don't walk into a theater and yell fire. You know, you don't have that free speech. No, see, they, they avoided even touching all that if they, the way they went, so... Whether that's planned or not, or the easy way out, I don't know. I just know that there's more to this. And to me, dealing with the police powers is what they're bringing down. That's the military side as well. It's what it comes under color of. This military uses that almost everywhere. And so it's more important that, from my perspective when I look at this to let you know that that's what you're dealing That's the real battlefield. Yes, you have the right to congregate under the First Amendment, but they were exceeding their power underneath the power they claimed. And I want to identify that because that's the worst power. The police power is the worst one. It's like eminent domain. How do you fight that? Well, it's defensible if you know what you're doing, but maybe not so in a, in a system that you haven't also been able to out as a criminal. And that's the bar system. Okay, and this is what we did in 2013, making the bar association a party <laughs> to the thing that they do. And we got crickets on the response. Great for us because that's a default judgment. Another thing, uh, properly looking at moving on a little bit more, it's coming into the bearing of, the, again, this overall global, global governance, uh, moving into what's going to become the medium of exchange. And it's certainly not going to be a free ideas. And it's not going to be that free speech. It's funny they provoke, promote the, the public areas as such, but then you get off into down the public uh, easement or the public highway and those that derive their income from the public highway called uh, Internet businesses. All of a sudden, that evaporates? I don't think so. I think it's an improper way of a, not applying what you should be, but I think it's there. And, and, and along that way, we've got this crypto thing coming, and uh, the proper way or improper way to do things, I, I see going on in this as well. And this is kind of interesting because it's a new thing in the world uh, that you watch people actually asking for the legislation. They're asking for the legalization, which is fascinating to me, on, on people that claim to be libertine and decentralized. And so a report came out, a very important report, uh, written by uh, Hilarmo uh, Jimenez. Excuse me if I butchered that name. Uh, it's the guy that I've told you that I'm not so sure about his insight on some of the what I see to be the legalisms at play. And the guy that the law, they discussed this thing and making everything a question. And you told, I told you you don't have to. 
in my first example is like the IRS commissioner has to find an activity that you're doing that makes it, that person that's doing that, not you, but the person, the business, doing that, a liable to a tax, and attach the activity that it does that's liable to the tax, and make records and keep books. That's a special formalization that should happen that no one happens. No one requires that. So everyone makes believes they have to pay taxes without the right challenge. No, they listen to Larkin Rose going through an argument, 181 argument, or whatever he did, admitting that it's upon him without saying, no, he, he needed to avoid that. No, we do it all wrong, and then we, we self-inflicted wounds. Same thing's going on with this crypto coin and the SEC. Telling statements coming out of the commissioner of the SEC, Hester Pierce, and the question in the title is, is the SEC creating secret law for crypto? I just told you about the law injunction. You go and you stop this police power. You've got to get the power in the right way. When you, when you get the fact that they're exceeding their authority, they have no authority because they have no jurisdiction, then you've defeated the whole thing, or they exceeded a power to try and gain a jurisdiction or an authority. And jurisdiction and authority are similar, but they're different. So you have to understand uh, that. And I'd say I'm not going to give you what I say more than go do a research and do it more than one spot. You've got to do quite an extensive one to get a picture on this. It's so some of it's subtle, but some of it's not. And so uh, the SEC uh, is claiming by this article that it has secrets. And this came right out of the uh, SEC, SEC commissioner's own mouth that, uh, in her speech, Pierce acknowledged the daunting complexity of federal securities laws, the final details of which the budding crypto industry is learning to handle. These intri intricacies can create a compliance minefield for market participants, Pierce said, and unraveling that complexity can be a matter of professional life and death. There's more in this article, very important to read, but I read this paragraph, and there's more, I could, I wanted to talk more about it, but I probably don't have enough time. The, this paragraph is telling in a lot of ways. Remember, we, we have, a, we live in a society of due process. Again, looking at what's not said, looking at the omission of what's said, looking at what's looked past in order to say this. If you don't have a, a concept in your mind, you're, you're never going to be able to appreciate what we were to do and what we were to keep as a people in this society that's all blown down and really is why we are where we are. It's why cockistocracy rises to the top and becomes. Uh, she uh, Pierce acknowledged the daunting complexity of federal security laws. Fair enough. But they're not supposed to be confusing, are they? And they're not supposed to be a matter of life and death. When I heard life and death, uh, that's a very serious statement coming out of the agency's official mouth, the commission is an agency's own mouth. Life is supposed to be protected, and death is not supposed to be advanced. No capital punishment without due process. When you're talking about then saying that the intricacies can create compliance minefield for market participants, she just admitted to a major failure of her authority. She's not supposed to make it a minefield. It's supposed to be known. There aren't supposed to be any mines in the field for the market. And that's the other point. This is what I'm getting at. The cryptocurrencies want to be in a market. The government says we want to protect against fraud. And we're going to define what a security is. You can't commingle that, folks. These people that want to do crypto are in the wrong place unless they want to become regulated and centralized. And their actual option is that they want to make money from the use of the currency as an investment, a security, holding value. All right, so all this comes starts to come to play that they, she admits that this is a matter of life and death. She has no jurisdiction or authority to impose that or allow it to be imposed. I looked at this article that was written, brilliant uh, expose, on just just focusing on what she had said. You go through this whole conversation, and the author identifies for me all the bullet points I was telling you about making earlier on why this authority cannot exist to regulate crypto. Uh, she even says there has to be major law changes. That alone kills the jurisdiction and authority. You just bring this forward and say, you're making a minefield where you don't have the right to, to commit life and death, uh, you know, to determine my life and death. You weren't given that power. And until you get the law, from which your rules will be lawfully promulgated, you have no authority either. You certainly don't have jurisdiction over something that's a new idea, and a, and a 
coming up, you know, it's a baby idea, formative, it's, com it's formative, it's coming into, into being. If people don't start looking at this, and I've talked, my criticism of this, uh, this author and that, and that and these people, these attorneys that are back there looking at, oh, we looked at this, this is one guy said, oh, we're patients, we're getting there. Well, my observation, where's there? Define there for me. See, stop becoming nebulous. You have to define where there is because the SEC is defining you're there and you haven't defined that you're not. And if you can't do that and you can't assert that as a as a challenge, you're going to lose. So crypto is sitting in this interesting position. And what did I said before on these articles? When they come, the SEC says you may be underneath the scrutiny or comes as a chat as a fine. What did I? What did I? The first thing you can now use these all. Well, wait a minute. Now you made it a minefield. Where was a clear notice to me that I was subject? Is no different. The question is, what's the due process that you provided when you the IRS commissioner con con considered me a person subject to the income tax or any tax for the activity? And where do I keep my records and books? Where did that order happen under the due process? Everyone's jumping a big protective step, and I've told you before many years, due process may be the only thing we have left. Why I focus on a lot of it as well. You can kill, this is what the set-asides for any complaint are. Uh, let's see a violation even. You find the set-aside where there's something that's not, uh, that creates a, an infirmity or avoidance, avoidance of the charging instrument because it was required to give a certain notice in certain subject matter areas. That's what we're doing right here. You can't jump in and want to be legalized by somebody that tells you they need laws to change before they can even deal with you. And they're working, they appreciate the problem, and I have to, I'm not dissing on this commissioner, I think they actually do have a problem, and they're trying to reasonably deal with it. But no one stepped up and said, wait a minute now, <laughs> you just said you needed laws to change before you could start looking at this. You said you created a, mi a landmine, a minefield. Yeah have complexities that you're applying to a law that doesn't sound like it's even applicable to security laws, and then you find me ahead of time without a notice, one, of how we're going to keep this thing organized. I see no one, I should say, says no one yet on these issues. And those of you that are into, the, into this crypto stuff, I keep telling you, when you define there, then you get to define whether you're going public or keeping it private. See, there's a whole lot of steps being missed by everybody. They just want to be legalized. And with, as we see with, with everything legalized, it's limited liability for a reason that says, that's criminal what you're doing. You don't have the right, but we'll allow you to do it if you follow these guidelines. Now, there's nobody I know that's dealing in crypto for the sake of crypto that thinks it's criminal. But they should be regulated. But this is what everybody's walking right themselves into with the people that create this and do this market side thing. They say the secret law, he talks about, the re, this is one of the main problems, they were talking about the, the fatal competitive disadvantages because there's lawyers and moneyed businesses involved with the agency inside, secretly making regulations that affect everybody that nobody finds. They said this is like a trans, the lack of transparency and accountability. Someone actually said this shouldn't happen in a democracy, and I answered, that's exactly what happens in a democracy. See, people don't understand even what the democracy is. It is a representative rule. The attorneys are the ones that speak for you. And they do it admittedly now by the commission, uh, the commissioner as a secret law that works as law. And it, she says here, I think she says incorrectly, the secret law as a practical matter, as a practical matter, binds market participants like law does, but is immune from judicial, even commission review. Well, first of all, you have to put yourself in a, as a market participant, which they cannot define at this point, apparently, unless it's by secret lawyers and businesses who can pay for them to do so. But is it actually immune from judicial attack? If they extend beyond what the law says they can do, isn't that in, uh, subject to a mandate or a writ of mandate, mandamus, or subject to an injunction? So here she's putting out what I think is completely bogus information. But you all keep, they're interested in the crypto, where it's going. 
It's going to be forced into a shoe by a shoehorn that it really was never meant, and you all that are doing it are not talking in the right way are going to allow the prison upon you that this is planned to be. And so this, I found this fascinating, the discussion here. I guess I could maybe could spend more time on it, but it's really not about cryptocurrency. This is about how we don't address agency and federal authorities correctly. It's how we don't pick apart the very things that they're telling us and put them in a line item point, at least a lawyer ought to. I don't know about these attorneys, the attorneys, but the lawyer, the ones in the law, shouldn't be saying we're getting there when we're not. And they've admitted that they're not. And putting that up as the first avoidance and the first letter coming out of the mouth of the commissioner to have the whole industry not even subject to this until the government gets its ducks in a row regarding the subject matter. See, every one of these crypto, whatever they're called, ICOs, whatever, whatever they want to be called, they're looking to get in. When the SEC looks out and says it looks like their activity is subject, that's your first, that's your first notice that would bring that entity in to be asking. The answer, at least by what I'm seeing now by being stated, stated would be the things I've essentially illuminated and some others in the statement from the commissioner saying essentially that they're really acting outside of all jurisdiction and authority. And so then you your fight isn't as a fine. Your fight isn't as subject. Your fight is, is whether or not they have the authority to say you're subject. Now, are you subject to find it at that point? No, because, see, it's a question. As long as that question is open, they can't do anything either. This is another thing I found out in the for the miners. They don't understand any of this. It, that's why you make your records. You make your records because if you keep the question open, they can't make a determination. Why? Because of due process. They have to give you a firm, certain notice. Now, I don't think I'm talking too technical here for people to understand and why I believe it's so simple what we're failing to do around in our whatever interests us that's gone wrong. But to me, it's all the same approach. It's all the same problem. Again, as I was looking now at my response to someone, said, I've been talking, he says, I've been talk te talking about this for two years. This is the inside secret law stuff he's responding to. Closed door meetings benefiting expensive lawyers and established businesses who can afford them. Well, that's the cha-ching factor. That's what this whole place is made for, folks. So what's, there's no surprise here. But this guy hasn't got it yet. This is not, not how regulation is supposed to work in a democracy. Well, I don't know. We don't live in a democracy. But democracy do work that way. So my response is, remember, it's representation. And so you'll hear that in my response to him. I don't get anybody responding to me. No one wants to talk to me on this stuff. No one wants to tell me I'm full of it. No one wants to clarify how I misinterpreted anything. I find that fascinating in people. I find that no, not very few want to respond to me when I'm asserting a principle or the law or a better way to go look at it, and really answering the complaint, if you will. No one will respond in acknowledgement whether I should be, you know, I'm dumb, nuts, or whatever. Nobody responds. And I know why, because, again, you don't respond when you got caught. Now, you can believe you know better, but that's just your ignorance. And to not come back shows that you probably can't. And I don't even take that I'm right. I'm just saying here's a, a position. You, you're, you went into a democracy. That's not a semantic. See, I do property law. You want to deal with these cryptocurrencies as property? Or are they some subject market thing? Is your problem? Where's there, folks? The, the attorney already knows where there is. He won't tell anybody. He doesn't understand. Well, once you do that, you still have to do where it's there. Then you decide whether it's public or private. No, no, they're already subject. But anyway, I answer this way. But this is how, this is how it works in democracy, through representation. This condition is not limited to this agency and appears universal across both federal and state govs and into the legislative branch as well. The attorneys are the are the judicial branch too. Now I don't think anything I said there is an error. I don't I can produce the proof of every bit of it. I have no response to that that I can see. Nothing I had to that came my way unless it's shadow banned. And this thing is underwriting not just securities. On a new thing, 
this is the same tactic that's going on in all facets and all governments, the thing we sued in 2013. It's not through just sustainable development. It's a method of destruction. The attorneys are critical to it. Maybe why the attorney says, hang in there, folks. We're almost there and doesn't define what there is. And I don't know why I'm so special to see this so quickly. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm kind of lost about that part. I have no sense of bearing. I know I just see this stuff. I want these people to do much better for themselves. I don't really. I'd like to see crypto work. I don't want to see it legalized. As you hear me say, I don't want to see lots of stuff legalized. And I'm in a room full of people to say, yeah, no, no government, no state. Well, you're you're asking for it. How are you asking for it? Not asserting due process, in interfe um, evasion, and breach. We're not there. We're not even close. The commissioner tells it, came right out of their own, her own mouth. Fascinating. It blew me away, actually, what she was saying, admitting to. Great. Honesty, folks. That's okay. It is how this thing works. And it isn't really fair. And maybe it can be changed, but she's also admitted worse things relative to imposition that they can't actually. And it stands there to deny that someone's going to be subject to lo the loss of life and death and I know that's relative in the marketplace, but similarly still, life is to be protected in the preamble, and uh, and the death is not supposed to be premature. Capital debt, capital crime is not supposed to be done without due process. They're admitting they're already doing it to to people that literally walk their walk in and put their head in the guillotine. Now that's that's somebody people trying to be legitimized by 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 government for what to be in a market. What's that market? It's fiat, folks. I keep telling you, there's a big connection here that these people are driving it to. An attorney legal attorney somewhere wrote the legalization for pot across the states. That wasn't to help you. Okay, it was to take the penal step problem out and put it under administrative taxation abilities for of criminal activity that was given constraints so that you can go ahead and do it. It wasn't, a, it was like Florida not recognizing the right you have to grow your own food in your own land given that you're not on a, a housing association site type property. So, while the officials are written, uh, trying to, well, these, uh, private currency, if you will, private mediums of exchange, whatever they are, don't even fit in the federal securities law. They're trying to shoehorn them in uh, it's supposed to regulate an industry. Then we go to the other side, and this fascinating research pops up, a report, a, st a research study uh, uh, that apparently was pulled. It wasn't promoted widely, even though someplace in Congress they were in a commission, or a commission of some sort, they were uh, was it, uh, handing it out. Politico, apparently by the story, I guess you could read the story, Politico said they were going to present it, but then never did. No other mainstream, if you will, internet or other uh, media produced this document after stating it was there, and that caused a bunch of questions for people. But when you have a system, we can now see where is the regulation take it, and we now can attach crime and the and the that the government fosters and encourages crime is in a report that came out relative to this uh, 2008 fiscal blowup. And then the you know the tar all the all the payments that were made to the banks. Research study of ongoing crime spree by Wall Street mega banks gets news blackout. Here's why: it was a, a study made uh, by uh, Better Markets. A fascinating study. Uh, Twenty. Uh, this good. Some of the basic uh, some of the basic numbers. I think, if I remember correctly, there was 82 trillion dollars in bailouts. That was a T. Tango. 82 trillion in bailout money. I didn't even know that. I mean, TARP was like underneath a trillion. There's been so many now that 8.2 trillion. Then they took and remember this derivative economy. They took out derivative services. Now you didn't see any of this money, but the government gave license to these so-called banks. Remember, if they hadn't, they would have failed. We would have had to do a better system. Everyone said that was going to be disastrous. Well, that's telling you there's crime underneath the backside that would have been exposed, but no one started to look at that. 8.2 trillion in bailouts. What they did with that is they made $22 trillion worth of these other services that they defrauded people out uh, with. The, the agencies to come back in and fix that by fine, if you will, charge them with the crime of doing that, 
I don't think anybody goes to jail on any of this is one of the report points. They had to pay eight, $8.2 trillion back, and they made $22 trillion in their services. Is the government supporting organized crime? This report, in fact, Grimner, if you're listening, I'm wondering if we should capture this and put it on the website available to people. Again, it's like some numbers and graphs. It's not that hard to read. But it's one of these documents that would uh, be nice to have available for people, I think, just to look and see. It's a nice, uh, it goes through this, this scenario of what happened, things I don't normally study, but uh, who, the, who the banks are, it goes through all this list, goes through uh, a discussion about it, uh, goes through the term, like even they use the word rap sheet in this report, and they found a term rap sheet in only one place. In other words, it was a unique term that was never put in any any publication except one and then this this came out, which is mind-boggling. You want to see the government in play to be an aider and a better of crime and the furtherance of crime to prey on you all. This document starts to show that and how there's really no impetus to, to do different with this. And, and this brings us up to the idea, well, then what's, what's all this regulation for anyway? And I'm wondering whether or not we, we aren't ready to start putting that in. I wish I could get most of you all to understand what I've been saying so you could in earnest put it together, uh, how this is all pointing to that. Again, when the caucusocracy rules and there is no law, then what's law? Now, I don't mean that as just an uh, idea, yeah, so what's law? So uh, No, we, we have a law, but it's being followed. And when the organizers, the, uh, the establishment, don't want to follow their caucusocracy, psychopath, parasites, and there's no accountability, what can the government expect from us? And in particular, where it does this, over the past 20 years, a statement on the Wall Street Journal using, uh, referencing the term rap sheet, over the past 20 years, authorities have made more than a quarter of a billion arrests. Bravo. Quarter of a billion arrests. The Federal Bureau of Investigation estimates. As a result, the FBI currently has 77.7 .7 million individuals on file in its master criminal database, or nearly one out of every three American adults. The paragraph below that goes on to say, but none of these CEOs, nothing, no jail time, no nothing relative to another financial crisis commission, no different like an SEC, SEC authority, none of these people go to prison. And so I was just astonished at how many arrests. There's quite a few people that get multiple arrests. A quarter of a billion arrests and 77.7 .7 million. The 7.7 7 .7 was questionable to me. So exacting. Another, notwithstanding all that, one-third of American adults have been arrested, not one CEO or top executive. It was a, just, it's a, it's a, proof, a proof somehow in, on its own of the problem that we're going to face. Again, this battlefield that we live in. And they'll go through and they try to find what's... They actually, it was astonishing to read the report and get to the footnotes. The very first footnote was amazing, actually. They wanted to talk about well, what was the value to of the bailouts. When the federal government did that, what value was it? Because we see all this crime, what's the value? And then they, they kind of dismissed that there could be a value. They make, there's lots of I don't know why people even want to know about this, but there's lots of argument and debate on the value. So, but I looked at what he was saying because he makes the, the author makes of the report makes another another statement, a standard by which the impact, not the value, but the impact would would be valued oh, for purpose of value. He makes this statement, and I answer a question to the Twitter in this article: value of bailouts. What was the value of the bailouts in the first place for the federal government to do so? They go through their list of how beneficial. The author does an makes an astonishing claim. He says under the footnote that the, the footnote one that the bailouts were an un, were undeniably priceless. Undeniably priceless. I don't know if you appreciate what the word priceless means in legal, even legal. It means that you have no cause. You can't put a value on something. You have no cause. So they come right out of the gate. He agrees that these were undeniably causeless. But in the monetary sense, they're saying, we're confused by what the value actually was. But they were, he deems them to be priceless. And 
in the normal view that it is beyond the price. Astonishing claim. And I make this observation for you. Maybe think about how this really works. Because then you start seeing how it starts to work, I think. By this standard, quote, thus the precise amount isn't as relevant as its magnitude and long-term impact are calculated from the limited liability fines and one additional cost, that government fostering and encouraging crime is considered undeniably priceless, is my observation. And isn't it, folks? And when you realize that's the reality of the world, the society we live in, you understand the crime that's against us, and you understand the assessor we are against that crime to not call it out. It's no wonder we are in the problems that we have. But it doesn't mean that that takes and exonerates the criminal. And so we that's our part. But we're still sitting there. So what's the value of the bailouts? What's the value to the government? It was undeniably priceless what they did to you all, what they continue to do, and what they're going to continue to do to you as long as you remain the crickets. And what is the condition and system that they're putting on you? Is, is this, again, this crypto decentralized, it's going to be legalized stuff, all cashless currency type stuff. It's going to be, again, we're back to this all social credit nonsense. It's all wrapping itself up. Why under 5G, back to the, you know, blaming the cars today for the asthma of the kids. It's all for the children. Well, what? Put them in a prison like this, folks. Where crime is undeniable, to the, for the government crime is undeniably priceless. I mean, I can't even tell you how accurate that is. And so how are they going to keep track of all you you people? Like I've told you, you're going to use your phones. The crypto is going to be part of this whole thing. Blockchain, you can put on a ledger. You're going to be put on a place that you can be tracked, and they're going to own it. They're going to own all your stuff. A tracking phones, Google is a dragnet for the police. And real quickly here, I think we're again looking at the problem. This thing they're talking about is they're worried about privacy. If you start looking at the Fourth Amendment against these phones, and you look at the geofence that Google puts around them, remember I told you that the Boston police are already doing this, where they take you out by how your proximity to a known gang member was, they make you an associate gang member. This speaks exactly to this. And Google is using GPS, and what occurred to me was, you, the proper, more proper argument is whether or not their geofence is actually within the specification for GPS for the purposes of the cause, the probable cause that you were near somebody. In other words, if they can't get you down within three foot of somebody, that warrant wasn't speci didn't special, uh, specialize a location close enough. So the rest of it is just, uh, just um, uh, beyond the warrant authority. I think, once again, when you look at some of this, they've extended these beyond the... the beyond what they should have been, and no judge is, is bringing it, is, is actually standing in the gap, if you will, for the law. You have to bring the fact that their they're GPS, they're, they're scrutinizing the way they get this information. What they use as probable cause is too broad. You can't do a neighborhood. You can't, you can't, your warrant can't cover a neighborhood if you're after one party. And then when you're after one party, you have to have some connection more than a geofence area, which could be a whole, like 20 miles away, they said. No, someone has to assert that that was faulty, that warrant's faulty, where it gave more than a, a three or four foot extension past the one that they were after. So unless you say that, unless you have it in your mind, you're going to lose to these, uh, these it's not a privacy concern, it's an extenu it's a, a violation of your constitutional protections, because you don't think they're there, apparently. Neither do the judges, the bar members. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said inspires you to keep digging in and dig, dig up what we need to dig up. Turn over the road, time to plant the taters, I guess. Put the seeds in the ground, let's see if we can get something for summer. Uh, thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Uh, Jules over at ucy.tv. Thank you. Hope you're doing real well. And anybody else rebroadcasting, broadcasting, and all that kind of stuff, appreciate that. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
for opening up a can of whoop-ass, feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 